Well, Dave, you show up at the Tour de France and team wins twice, twice in two days. Um, well, first of all, um, tell us how you enjoyed, where you enjoyed, um, where you watched today's stage. Mm. Well, I was in a car with Steve, actually, um, and I'm leaving tonight because that'll mean I've got 100% record. <laughs> Quick way of winning, I guess. But uh, no, joking aside, it was, it's been <clears throat> long overdue, you know, I came, came yesterday and, of course, we have to work. Um, and then uh, today was just brilliant. You know, I haven't been in the car for quite a while, you know. And, and what I loved about it is, it's you forget, you step, you take it for granted, you know. But you step away and you come back into a race and you realise just how, what a crazy sport it is. You know, it's, it's so hard and it's so dangerous and it's so chaotic at times. And that big crash at the start, and and yet, and, and on the other hand, it's like really calculated, you know. So it's kind of this crazy mix, and and you know the scenery. Of, and the mountains and everything else have been, it just reminded me, I, that, I love this sport so deeply that you, you, you know, you come back from a little break and it's just like, wow, I really, really love this sport a lot and I've missed it a lot. But, um, and it's always better when you win, I guess. Well, you are talking like a man who hasn't been at many races recently and indeed I don't think you have. No. Um, Dave, for those who don't know what you have been doing over the last mm. 18 months or so mm. and the extent of your influence now in Ineos, mm. the cycling team, mm. just tell us a bit about that. Well, I kind of changed my role really, and, and um, Ineos has now you know, got a sports group of teams, a sports platform, so it owns a third of the Mercedes Formula One team. It owns two, two, it owns two football teams in Nice and the French League One and, and Lausanne in Switzerland. Um, obviously, we've got the, the cycling team, and we've got Ben Ainsley's America's Cup team, and then we've got to deal with uh, the All Blacks, a former partnership with the All Blacks, and, um, and with Elliot Eli Kipchoge, who did the you know, two sub so two hour marathon. And um, I'm the director of sport for all of that, basically. So I sit above all of that and, um, and oversee all of that. And, you know, in the last sort of uh, 18 months, that's taken up a lot of my time. And what we're trying to do is trying to take, you know, the best out of the nutrition. With the, you know, the nutrition in here is such a core element of success. You know, if you don't get your nutrition, you're not going to win here. So everybody puts a lot of effort into nutrition. And you can take that and the best learners of that and, and shift it across into football or you can shift it across into the sailing team. And, you know, it could be the sort of data and analytics and strategic planning of the Formula One team and being over here, and so there's like a cross pollination of, of ideas, which I think the British Olympic sports, when I was part of that and, and grew up in that, they did that ever so well, and and so that experience is kind of thought, mm, you know, if you could do that in a professional group of sports, it would be quite exciting. So I've been involved in that quite a lot, and then um, I guess on the football side, we've been keeping ourselves busy. Um, and yeah, there's less said about that, the better really. But well, I've been keeping me busy too. Let's put it that way. Well, there are a couple of football teams, two or three already in um, Ineos's portfolio. There's talk of it being expanded, the portfolio, soon, imminently. Yeah. Manchester United bid by Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Um, how much are you involved in that, and how confident are you? Well, I've been, in, you know, obviously been involved, and it's something that we're um, very, uh, very keen to do. Um, and it's not something we can really discuss in detail, you know, we've all signed up to NDAs and all that stuff. But it's um, it's an ongoing process and, and, and we'd be very much like to do it, you know, and I think to be um, custodians of uh, one of the, the biggest sporting teams and, and brands in, in the world and, um, and, and try and, you know, really support the not only the team and going back to the success that it, it deserves but also the fan base and you know I've worked in Manchester for a long time you know we, we, we kind of had the, the cycling team that became a sort of global phenomenon and, 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 and Team Sky did the same and so I, I know Manchester really well and uh, I think you, you kind of get a sense of what the culture is all about and what the fans want and uh, it'd be good to be part of um, a project to be able to do that. Staying here at the Tour de France, Dave, I think people extrapolate from, they know about the Ineos interest in Manchester United and they look at what's happening in cycling with Vingegaard and Pogacar dominating and they sort of extrapolate and they imagine that maybe there might be a cooling of Ineos' interest in cycling in the Tour de France, in building or, or building a new dynasty here. Um, is that the case? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, one of our core sort of things is, or values is, is winning, you know. We want to win, you know, it's not going to change. But everything's cyclical as well, isn't it? You know, and we had a period where we had that, you know, run of, um, you know, the top riders and, and performing really well, and then we had a very unfortunate stint where, you know, Chris obviously had his you know, big accident, and Egan, who was kind of deemed his success, had a big accident. Um, but the uh, it hasn't diminished our desire to win, you know. And, and when you look at what we're doing now, it is, you, you know, it's clearly 
the case that Pogacar's been there for a while. Vingegaard's just, been, two years ago, it was Roglic, it wasn't Vingegaard. You know, and so, so that's changed, and things change quite quickly in sport. So you've got to, you've got to keep competing and plan and, and, and believe and, and, and not get stuck in a mindset of, oh, you know, this is dominant, it's going to last forever. It's not, basically, and it's still win. And, and so you've got to believe on that and, and build a team around it. And so that's what we're going to try and do. And, well, talking football, um, a former footballer has been linked to your cycling team, Remco Avenepoel. That's been one of the, the mooted solutions for Ineos Grenadiers. How do you build Ineos Grenadiers 2.0, 3.0? Well, maybe with Remco Avenepoel to win the Tour de France. Um, are, we, are we in fantasy land? Well, I've been watching for his football skills, to be honest, and see whether, whether we can get him you know, in one of the football teams. In all seriousness, you wouldn't discuss a rider from another team and contract him. Uh, and, you know, he's a great rider, and so he's under contract with another team. You know, so I think you know, speculation's always right in this sport, isn't it? You know, you can say that. Like that. 